Hi, Boilermaker fans. This is Drew Brees. You're listening to the Purdue Athletics Podcast. Kendrick Brown stays at home alongside Drew Brees. Drew takes the snap from center. Looks, has time to throw. Here's it out deep. Way downfield. Grab by Morales. He's going to score. He's going to score. Touchdown, Purdue. Seth Morales. Seth Morales. There are no flags. The Boilermakers have taken the lead on a 64-yard strike. Unbelievable. Here are your hosts, Corey Palm and Tom Schott. Welcome back to the podcast, Corey Palm alongside Tom Schott and the fastest man in Purdue history, uh, Wasim Williams, hey. just uh, slid into his chair. Thanks, Wasim, for joining us. Uh, it's been a been a busy couple of weeks for you. Yeah, it has. It has been. When you describe like that, uh, we've had some some pretty fast guys at Purdue through the years. Um, what, what kind of sense of pride do you have in that? So, um, I've been fast all my life, you know. <laughs> Running, running from everything. <laughs> Getting in trouble learning from my parents, yeah. running from my cousins. So I've been a speedster for a while. Uh, being the fastest at Purdue, you know, that's 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 something that gonna be memorable because it's staying in history. So I like that title, fastest man at Purdue history. <laughs> I mean, I've I've been the fastest man since last year, but with the record. Shout out to Shane Crawford. He had the hundred meter record first. <laughs> Sorry to take it from you, buddy, but <laughs> yeah, I wanted it. But now it's in the 10-0s, kind of show the standard of where Purdue track and field is going. Just talk about uh, the recently uh, completed NCAA championships. Um, you were awesome. Two first-team All-America nods uh, in the 100, and then obviously the 4 by 100 relay. Just everything seemed to come together for you? Yes, sir. Uh, started out in the year. This This might sound... Odd, but I was really focused on the relay team. Uh, I wanted, I wanted, I was so excited to have these these boys join the team: Justin Becker, Samson Colbrook, uh, Tamar. Lately, I was really excited to see where the relay team could go. I wasn't even focused on individual performances that much. I mean, I, I still knew I had, I had to do what I had to do in the individual events. But that relay is just something special. Something about something about teamwork that just drives me, and I wanted, I wanted us to. To get there, uh, the times weren't as good leading up to like the the, the more important meets like re- the Big Tens, regionals, nationals. But we were making progressions, changes, and coaches were changing things, and we see what worked and what didn't. And it all came together. Uh, ran up Big Tens, thirty nine three, missed the school record. I was like, okay, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it good. Came in at regionals. Underdogs, as usual, <laughs> counted us out, but we wanted it, you know. And the changes were smooth. Everybody did their job. We blistered thirty nine, <laughs> went thirty eight seven five. Uh wanted it, didn't see it coming though, to be honest. But we got it, and then we went thirty eight two times after that. So I know it's consistent, and yeah, that's that's our region right now. You uh, you guys kind of got some attention winning the the East Region like you did. It's it's historically a little bit faster with a lot of the SEC schools in it uh, to to have Purdue on top of that podium, just uh, sort of and to get sort of some of that national attention. What did that mean to you, uh, it, it, it personally and and as your group? I mean, it meant it meant a lot. Uh, we went through a lot in practice, uh, fall leading the spring. A lot of a lot of a lot of things we had to get used to, um, technique wise, uh, academic wise. We had to you know be consistent in 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 the classroom as well as the track. So getting that attention, knowing that we're in a Big Ten school, and the school is not that track dominated. We're about to be, but uh, competing with the SAC, SEC schools rubbing shoulders, knowing that a that's their territory, and we're, we're we're running in on it. I mean, it's very motivating. For those that don't know track or don't know relays, especially, I mean, what do you practice? What are the key? I and mean, I'm assuming it's the handoffs and all those sorts of things. But just take us through how you get better as a relay team from from start of the year to okay. to where you ended up. So, uh, coach always says it's not the fastest four, but it's how fast you can move the baton. Um, we try to move the stick around as fast as possible. He says, every person, if they run 100 meters, 
we'll get the sticker around fast. Everybody just focus on that 100 that they have to run, and we'll get it right. Um, we focus on markoffs. You know, you see we lay the tapes down. We, we, we mark it off to the place to a place where we know if they get there and we run out they're gonna catch us at a certain point in the zone and each time we experiment with that till if we're out in the zone or the middle of the zone just just to see how perfect it would go around and we experiment with that at different meets just to see how we play it out till we get the right the right marks and that's basically it we just we just work on our marks and everybody run a hundred meter and we're good you mentioned tomorrow kind of a late addition I guess to the group just what was that so, like and, and how do you make a change like that uh, I mean there's a saying that well, Marley said it I should know this I'm a Jamaican I should know this <laughs> anyway <laughs> you don't know how strong you are until strong is the only thing you have to be and I think Tamar 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 is, is the definition of that uh, as a jumper wasn't focusing on sprints sure. at all I mean does running in his program but you know technique wise he's not a sprinter and to jump in on the team and make that big impact that he did throughout each meet uh, it, was, it was very valuable to the team um we knew what he could do because we saw him came out of blocks and he, he was very quick out of blocks i mean imagine if he had some time with us some yeah. more time with us imagine <laughs> those guys in front of him would have get blasted but he still did a great job and i mean just just goes to show that like whatever you do you know if, if you want to do something you can do it uh, despite the, the factors that that play in your mind hey I, I'm not used to this but you can adapt you know Tamar's gonna say hey you put me on the relay and we go sub 39 all three times maybe it's maybe it's me maybe I need to to do more really that was a bad joke i was trying to land a bad <laughs> joke there you guys took a big group to nationals it, it, what did that uh, what did that mean to you to have so many of your teammates competing alongside you this year oh man it felt great uh so when i got through with the 100 i was like okay i booked my spot but as i said earlier i wasn't even focusing on the individual events that much i wanted my boys to be doing yeah. you know I'm a, I'm a team player i'm gonna always be a team player Track and field is an individual sport, but I mean, if you don't have your team, you're not gonna go too far. So that was that was my main my main goal. Uh, went through with that four by one. Then there was the four by four. Uh, the four hundred is not my strong suit at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't like I don't like the lack that it's I feel too, too much pain there. Yes, yeah, <laughs> way too much. So I mean, they added me, and as as I said, I wanted my boys there with me, so I'm not gonna let them down. So I mean. I was amateur in the way I ran the race because I got some feedback afterwards. Still ran it, still ran it good, but the main goal was to get them through, and I did what I could to get them through. Your first couple of years, the, the women's side probably got all, most of the headlines, deservedly so, and now they're kind of rebuilding. But you've been part of kind of a resurgence of, of the men's side of things. Just what does that mean to you, knowing that you've kind of put Purdue men's track and field uh, back on the map? I mean, this this is basically coming from the women's side too, from from the the ladies that was that were there before. I'm getting that attitude, that 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 drive from them, you know. Seeing how they train in the past, see how they carry themselves. I wanted to be like that for the men, you know. Seniority is is a is a is a thing that you know it follows you. You're a senior. Everybody's gonna be there watching you. So I I have to lead by example. I'm not, I'll let you be like me. I'll show you what I do and you follow me if you want to. And that's that's really coming from the from one side, from Devin, she was a beast, uh, Brianna, Carmisha, Savannah, the Savannahs, all, all of them, I, mean, I look up to them. And I, I, try, I try to be like them, you know, I try to incorporate their values awesome. and, and move forward. How about Coach Elliott? What's, uh, what's it like to run for him? I mean, Coach Elliot is a guru. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't question what he, what he says. I just, I just do what he says. That, that's about it. And each time I do it, I see the results. You know, uh, there, there's this saying that they always say from my freshman year: just trust the process. And that's, that's all I've been doing. Trust the process. Control what I can control, and then just do what they, because that's their job. I mean, 
this is their career. They 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 live and breathe all of this, all of this. So I, they have the experience, and I just follow what they say. Well, him and Coach uh, Angie, and they're just, they're just they're just amazing. So what's next in the coming weeks and months? Do you ever take any time off? Do you keep working? Kind of take us between now and and when it all starts up again for real. Uh, I mean, the grind never stops. <laughs> Uh, I'm in summer school right now. Uh, next week, I'm going home for the national senior trials, and I'll see if I make a team there. Hopefully, I can. It's but, pretty competitive. Yeah, it's pretty competitive. Jamaican sprinting. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty competitive. <laughs> but I mean, put it on for the P. You know, I'm gonna have it on my chest. Oh yeah. I'm gonna run out and see see what I can do. You know, and come back here, school, and then relax after that, and then hit the fall with my boys. What are you studying? Uh, I'm in organizational leadership, and I'm doing a minor in HRM, human human resource management. Okay. So that's what I'm in right now. Any idea what you want to do with that, or or, or when the running days are are over? I have no idea what I want to do. With that. <laughs> I mean, I've told many people that, and they'd be like, "Oh, it's okay. You know, we've been okay. in that situation yeah. before. And, we all have. Yeah, you'll figure it out. But I just want that degree. I pray the degree carries some weight. So. As long as I get that degree, I know I know I'll be I'll be all right. Just, just tell us about uh, Jamaica, what it was like growing up there, and, and how you wound up uh, at Purdue. Okay, so I have a teammate, Shondell McLaren. Oh, sure. I, I was I went to high school with him, and he came here before me, and he told Coach Elliot about me. Yes, and Coach Elliot contacted me, you know, and he came came there and visited, and you know, I like I like his style, you know. Had a little rapport and he was interested in me and I was like, okay, cool. I mean, before that, uh, I had other schools that wanted to, but they they weren't showing as much interest as Coach E was. So I was like, yeah, this is gonna be the place because I can trust him. You know, that trust is the first thing that you have to have with a coach or anybody in that in that instance to 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 know where you want to go. And I trusted him. You know, I came for the visit. I didn't go. For visit any other school. I was just here. I was just here. And since then, I just knew I wanted to be here. Shonda was here, so I knew I was going to be comfortable. <laughs> you know, I was going to have his guidance. But I came here. My freshman year, it was, it was, it was trash, to be honest. You know, I mean, I was, I was still acclimating, you know, getting used to everything, where my classes were, practice time, weights in the morning, still getting used to all of it. I, mean, I competed, and then I got injured. And that was kind of depressing, but I mean, I bounced over it, you know. When I finished my f- my freshman year season, that's when I kind of got motivated, you know. I was ready to go. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get it next year, so that's where it really started from. You did too. Like that was going into indoors last year, right? Yes, sir. And you won two Big Ten championships. Kind of, kind of came out of nowhere. It surprised a lot of folks. Were Were you surprised with how? Quickly, you progressed once you uh, once you committed. Hey, to be honest, uh, that indoor season, um, I didn't know I was gonna win that race. But it, but as I said, I have two coach gurus, and <laughs> we made one single change at, at the meet itself. Okay, one change uh, at the meet. Wow! And after that, it was history. You know, ran in the heats, ran six six four, and I was like, wait, <laughs> the, the, the clock stopped too fast. Like, There's no way. But I mean. You're out there running a 55, apparently. See? Instead of yeah, a 60. <laughs> exactly. I was like, wait, wait a minute. But, I mean, it worked out for the best. Okay. Got a 6-6-3 six, six, in the final. Uh, this indoor, I mean, I wanted to go like 6-5, but, I mean, I don't know. My start starts neglecting me. I started seeing some top end. I mean, I'd, have, I'd rather have half and half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress, but... I mean, it kind of seemed it came kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere. It was it was really in the making. It just took one change. Wow. You know? Growing up, do you play other sports? And when did you realize you had a God given talent to to run really uh, fast? So my first ever uh, sighting of track and field because I lived across from the National Stadium, so. I was walking with my cousin one day, and I heard a lot of noise in the stadium. So I wanted to go check it out. 
I was supposed to pay to get in, but I was so small, so I just sneaked around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I went in and I just saw some some kids just jumping over something. I didn't know the hurdles at the time, but they were jumping and running, and it looked so cool. And everybody was making noise, and, and I'm like, yeah. But and I was walking in the stands, and I noticed some people from my because I went to primary school. They had a primary school championship, and I noticed some people from my class, but I didn't know this was a thing. So I wanted to do it. And that same year they had sports day, the sports day, and I ran there, and I beat everybody. You know? <laughs> and then from there, the coach for the primary school started recruited, started recruited the, the persons that won the sports day, uh, asked us if we wanted to join the track team, tell us, tell us about it and all of that. And then it started from there. <laughs> it was, it was meant to be. I guess that was my calling. <laughs> That's you know? great. Good. Well, Seem, anything you want to talk about? I mean, I want to shout out my girlfriend, Kaylin Strode. She's, she's been a, a very motivating factor. Uh, all my videos to my races, she sent them to me. She sent them to my mom. Uh, she's, a great, she's a great girlfriend, and I can't ask for a better one. And I just want to shout out my whole team. My boys are getting it done. And next, year, next year, we're going to be on top. Next year, as, as I said, I have a chip on my shoulder, and I show they do too. And we're going, we're coming for it all. We want big tens, indoors, outdoors. We we just we just we just gonna put Purdue on the map. We are already on the map right now, cause no one's gonna take us lightly in any meet. But we want everything. Man. We're going for everything. Man. Shout out to Samson, Malcolm, Sean, Dale, JB, Ja, Tamar, all the boys on my squad, <laughs> man. I love you guys. You know? We gon' we gon' we gon' we gonna kill it next year. All the freshmen coming in, all the transfers, man. We gon' we gonna get this. We can't wait to watch. Awesome. Have a great summer. We'll uh, we'll see you in the fall. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you very much. We're gonna take a quick break for just a moment here and thank one of our sponsors. We're gonna do it on theme here as we get to a little island music uh, to to match Wasim's vibe going here. The Purdue Athletics Podcast is brought to you in part by the Purdue Team Store as you start to plan for fall game days or just want to keep stylish this summer, check out the Purdue Team Store and help impact the lives of Purdue students. Did you know Purdue University receives a larger contribution from merchandise and apparel sales made at the Purdue Team Store than any other retailer? All sales from the Purdue Team Store significantly benefit the university in many ways, including its general and athletic scholarship funds. So the next time you decide to show your Purdue pride and purchase Purdue merchandise, please keep this in mind. Visit the Purdue Team Store and show your support. Call 855-5-PURDUE or visit purdueteamstore.com. Now back to the podcast. Thanks again to Wasim for, uh, for joining us, uh, finding time between his Maymaster class and his quick trip home to compete in the national championships. Uh, no, no big deal. Just a quick, quick trip home. Yeah, not, no big deal. So. <laughs> Take on, uh, I wonder if Usain Bolt will be running in, in that race. I should have asked him. Yeah. Doggone it. Oh, well. Too late now. We'll find out. He's gone. <laughs> Tom, uh, with the track championships last weekend, it wrapped up the 2018-19 year. A handful of All-Americans, uh, several good finishes for the men down in Austin, and uh, sort of a nice way to put, put a bow on, on the season. Yeah, that's a program that uh, we've kind of seen coming on uh, throughout uh, indoor and outdoor season, and, and you know, we're right in contention for the Big Ten Championship uh, outdoor and, and, and indoor, uh, for that matter. But uh, uh, they wound up uh, 36th, the NCAAs, as you mentioned, uh, a couple of uh, All-American honors, first team, second team, honorable mention. And, and I believe everyone that scored is coming back, plus a lot more depth. And, and you heard Wasim talk about uh, uh, they're getting some, some, some newcomers as well. So certainly uh, Coach Elliott has that program on the rise. And, and we knew it was going to be a rebuilding year uh, for the women's program. Uh, uh, they had some good individual performances as well and, and certainly very youthful. Uh, and, and they should be back uh, uh, in the thick of things uh, a year from now as well. Definitely, so much fun to watch. Uh, you know, track on the national stage. I was watching the championships at home last weekend and thinking to myself, "This is the fourth or fifth year we've been watching Purdue runners in the finals," and, and that's just that's neat to see. Um, 
elsewhere. Uh, like we said, everyone else is wrapped up for the year and some real major moments this, this past year. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw a few numbers out uh, to start. Uh, total of 23 student athletes uh, combined for 33 uh, All-America honors. Um, eight of those uh, were first team distinctions and obviously uh, you want to highlight uh, those individuals. Uh, had four individual Big Ten championships plus a couple of the track and field uh, relay uh, teams. Um, certainly you look at uh, from a team standpoint, uh, men's basketball probably uh, led the way uh, with their Elite Eight uh, finish at the NCAA tournament. Uh, a mere millisecond away from, from going to the Final Four. We won't relive that, but certainly what a great uh, a great run, a great season uh, uh, by Matt Painter's team, but certainly uh, uh, just that, uh, that Elite Eight game with Virginia, uh, one will never forget. Um, Virginia gets to come back to Mac Arena, or gets to come to Mac Arena in December for the Big Ten ACC Challenge. That'll be a lot of fun. But uh, not only the the game itself, which has to rank as one of the all time great uh, men's basketball, college men's basketball games, but just the the Purdue turnout there uh, was tremendous. Uh, uh, the Yum Center had to be three quarters, if not more, uh, old gold and black, uh, which was awesome. Uh, and certainly, uh, Matt's got his program. Uh, Rolling. Uh, women's golf, uh, ninth of the NCAA championships. We've recapped that uh, in the past, but uh, those were our two top 10 finishes. A bunch of others in the top 25 to, th to 30 range uh, when all is said and done. And um, above and beyond all that, uh, academically, uh, best ever uh, cumulative GPA coming out of the spring by all 500 student athletes, 3.12, uh, which again, you're talking 500. Uh, young men and women uh, getting it done academically. And, and I know uh, uh, we had uh, Seth Schwartz on a few weeks back and, and it was fun to kind of get some of the insights to that. But uh, uh, a good year and something to build on uh, and the momentum uh, continues. Definitely, definitely. Like you said, uh, the, the, that only day game in the Elm Center, <clears throat> a, a top 10, certainly possibly top five moment in program history uh, as far as experience goes. Last fall we had uh, one of those, uh, certainly a top five game in, in Purdue football history as well. When you can get two moments like that in, inside of an academic year, uh, things are definitely trending the right way. And if you go back to when Mike Pabinski was hired, uh, um, that was one of the first things, uh, maybe the first thing uh, he touched on was that uh, uh, what Purdue needs are some of those moments that kind of uh, elevate uh, the status of, of the whole department uh, on a national level. And, and no question uh, that Ohio State uh, football game uh, with Tyler Trent and, and the 49-20 to 20, uh, final score was, was one of those moments. And no question even uh, in a losing effort, uh, that Elite Eight game was one of those moments. People are talking about Purdue, and when they're talking about Purdue football, Purdue men's basketball, it just uh, it flows down and, and, and benefits uh, every other program. Uh, not only image-wise, but certainly from a recruiting standpoint, uh, uh, whatever other sport you're talking about, they recognize the name Purdue because of those those watershed moments uh, in football and men's basketball. So everybody wins when that happens, and, and it was great to have two of those uh, uh, just a few months apart. Absolutely. Good luck, uh, meanwhile, to uh, Carson Edwards next week, the <laughs> NBA draft. And uh, as much as we all hate to see him go, we... We uh, wish him all the best for for certain next week and beyond. Uh, we will. We've got a uh, working on a really fun guest for next week. We'll we'll uh, we'll we won't tease it much more than that. But you're going to want to tune in to hear some some fascinating tales from the road. Uh, there, there's your there's your little tease. There so. it is. So we'll uh, we'll catch you next week with with that. Uh, until then, boiler up. <laughs>